Hello Uncle Jonah. What do you mean what's up? Ooh, another message. Your malt miller order will be delivered by DPD. Mmm, it's Humbrew Wednesday. It's Humbrew time. I've just been mad on the old malt miller website. Ordering all my additional grains and uh, a few extra hoppages. Talking of hops, have a look at this. Spring has sprung. And so have the hop rhizomes. Just came out here to clear a little bit out. And they're going mad. Look at that lot down there. And this one. And this one. Soon be time for the weekly hop update, methinks. Oh, it's some other little ones there, look. No, it's not the battlefield of World War One, although it closely resembles the trenches. It's a quagmire of mud, squidgy mud. This is the intended site for the brew shed, which, as you can see, will be slightly postponed until drier weather. Yeah, so the sheds had a little bit of a setback with the ground conditions not being very favourable at the minute, but uh, I fenced it off to keep the dogs out of there and hopefully it will dry out. I'll put some guttering on the other shed to stop all the runoff. So uh, fingers crossed on that one we don't have any more deluges. It's supposed to be a more reasonable weather coming in for a week or so. And what a surprise, the hops have started shooting quite a bit actually, even the ones out the front have uh, started putting a sprout on as well, which is all good. And the one, if you remember, way back I had a big one chucked in a bucket that I salvaged from the house where they all came from, and uh, I basically forgot about it. It filled up with water and I thought, that ain't very good, that's going to rot. So I emptied the water out, chucked it behind the fence out of the way, put some stuff in front of it and forgot all about it. So I thought, ah, better have a look at that one. And that's uh, shooting as well. So I've put that in a little bit of soil to give it some nutrient to get that going along. So we'll have uh, five plants here this year. Just got to find uh, somewhere else to put them. <coughs> So there'll be some more hops, hopefully anyway. Last year I didn't harvest anything off those because they never really came at much. All uh, that big haul I got last year was really from uh, the waste ground out the back of the big house where I was working and the, the hop plants that were there, which at the minute people I work for have still got the house. Not much for, has progressed, so might be lucky, might, might, might. Um, if it's still there in September under their ownership, then there might be a chance to go and um, do some more snipping and gather another lot of hops, which means I'll have to buy a fridge. Uh, just out stop it there for the old cough. A little bit of dry throat, so I need some medicine, I think. <clears throat> anyway, you may see some bottles in the background. Not those up there. These are for a separate video. Mm, near the radiator. Samuel Adams Boston Lager. Hmm, from America. Samuel Adams Boston Lager. From Shepherd Neem in the UK. Very similar bottle. Hmm, will they taste the same? You'll have to wait and find out for another video. Anyway, I have here some old Humbrews, which was a bit of a fail. This was the chocolate stout that uh, just kept fermenting. And I think because it had a uh, infection possibly, 
that carried on fermenting all the other sugars that normal yeasts don't ferment. And I left it and left it and it eventually bottomed the gravity came out because it was sitting high. <coughs> that may have been the unfermentable sugars from the chocolate powder. It looks a cracking beer but there is an astringency and a smell of astringency if there is such a thing but there is a skunky smell to it. I don't know because I haven't had one for months. I've sat on them and I had the same taste from this which was a German Munich Dunkel and it was a kit I got from work that they had sat about three years. No, the actual malt extract was okay but I still used the old uh, grain bag <coughs> that came with the kit which I think is where the not good flavours come from. The oldie hoppies and the old grains. So we're going to crack them open and see if anything's changed or whether it's time to send them to the drain cleaner land and free up a bottle and a case that can go back into storage out in the shed. Give me a little bit more room here because I should be having another box of grains tonight. So let's crack the first one open. I should have got a towel just in case. Good hiss. Now this one did take a little while to kick in. You could pour it out, take a couple of mouthfuls, and once it's seen to get the air to it, that's when the smell and the taste became very pronounced to the point where it was so bad you couldn't drink it. As you can see, it looks a nice, a nice drop. There's a malty smell. Yeah, I'm still getting a little bit of that smell coming through now. Let's let the head die down. Ooh. Very, very bitter. Very bitter. <clears throat> Not as bad as it was, but mind you, well, I say it has warmed up. The bottles are at room temperature. But... <clears throat> it's not quite like hot bitterness, but. It was two steeping bags that came with this kit and I, I think one had to be steeped for a, a greater amount of time than the other. The thing was the colours had leached through into the little tea bags so you couldn't tell which one was which. And I ended up doing them the wrong way around. And then I'd done another steep with them which may have extracted some tannins. No coming through. Yeah. Oh. Very bitter. Like a super hop. But with no other flavours to benefit it. Which is a pity because I purposely used a straight glass. It's got great carbonation. <coughs> I think if you be okay but mm. no, leave that one to warm up. Let's try bottle number two. Right. Chocolate stay. Still quite lively.
good head on that one. Strong chocolate smell. <coughs> Come on, clean up. Here. Yeah. Clean up in aisle three. Super, super bitter again. <coughs> different, uh, different smell to the other one. Uh, seems to be on the on the head. Still like this is the Wilco's kit. Sugar DMA and Bourneville Dark Baker's Cocoa. Baking powder, chocolate, which seems to be where now all the bitterness is coming from. It's beginning to feel a little bit thin, actually. <clears throat> a little bit of roasted taste dryness that you give the steak. But it's very bitter from the chocolate. So well it's not actually you can smell the chocolate but you can't it's just a overpowering bitterness from chocolate. But it's all chocolate. Very dry bitter can't detect the astringency at the minute. <clears throat> Obviously it's still quite lively though. Mind you, it's about 20, 22 degrees in here. Hmm. It's not as bad as they were, maybe it's mellowed out. Try the taste test dummy in the other room. Well, seems to be the second opinion with someone else's taste buds. <coughs> Chocolate stout seems to be only the overpowering bitterness of the chocolate, so it could be serviceable. A little bit too bitter for my liking, but there we go. Some of you might get a chance to try it after all. Ooh, but the Munich Dunkley <coughs> gave that to my wife. I had another little sip and went, Ooh. she had it and said it smelled a bit like a hospital or a dentist's. Medicinally, I suppose, disinfectant. Now the old guru book says, um, Flavours are often described as medicinal, band-aid-like or spicy, like cloves. Various phenols that are initially produced by the yeast, chlorophenols, result in the reaction of chlorine-based sanitizers. Bleach with other phenol compounds have a very low taste threshold. Rinsing with boiled water after sanitizing is the best way to prevent these flavours. Now I can't remember whether I was still using the crystalline Sterilizers or I was on Star Sand. But wild gusher yeasts can also produce these flavours. Yeah, and the other one is a solvent like taste. This group of flavours is very similar to alcohol and Easter flavours, but with a harsher harsher to the tongue. These flavours often result in a combination of high fermentation temperatures, oxidization. They can also be leached from cheap plastic brewing equipment or if PVC tubing is used for the lathering manifold material. Well, obviously that wasn't issue because it was a kit. The solvents in some plastics like PVC can be leached by high temperatures. Make sure your plastics are food grade. Well the bin has been used time and time again so uh, not that. Anyway, it tastes shit. So the Munich Dunkel is dunkling down the drain.
And by the way, if anyone wants to say, where was you quoting that information from? How to Brew by John Palmer. This is a homebrew gear book. <clears throat> a Bible, I guess. Good book, if any of the newer brewers that watch the channel. It does cover primarily all grain, but it's more to do with the progress from kits to grain. It does go into a lot of technical detail, but you don't need to worry about it if it's a bit too in-depth or it goes over your head. The nuts and bolts stuff are in here as well. But it's a good book to start when you want to get to know a little bit more of the nitty gritty. Nuts and bolts. It's not gonna, that's gonna fall off. Anyway, yeah, so looks like one's a pass, one's a fail. Ah, I'll just check again. No. It smells worse as an old emulsion. Bear's disgusting. I almost want a bud to wash my mouth out with. Mm, it's not that bad. Anyway, fucking remove. Oh, what else have we got? Nothing, I don't think. No. We'll just check while I'm here. Mmm. Clear. Smash off time. Be posting them soon. Right, that's it. I've got to do them on another video. Oh, I've still got Tony's other other beer, his barley wine. They're going to get tipped, and they can go. Probably my son's bedroom. Seems he quite like them. Anyway, I don't think I've got anything else to tell you. I probably have forgot something, but it'll keep for another week. <coughs> so. Adios. Enjoy everyone else's Humbry Wednesday. And if you're watching Jonah, I know where you live. <laughs>